Good morning YouTube. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video I was just going to give you a much asked for greenhouse update. The new greenhouse has been up for about a month now and yeah things are doing really well. Um, there's so much stuff we could talk about and I can show you all the equipment and all the plants. Everything is doing so good. I'm just gonna grab my coffee. The table's right there. I got myself a new Starbucks cup. It is um from a friend she just got back from Vegas so but yeah there's so much to talk about in here I don't even know where to start um I think what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna show you the equipment first because I know a lot of you guys have been asking how things are operating and how things are doing and then maybe after that we will do a tour of like the orchids and the carnivorous plants and see what's in bloom I'm getting such good growth in here um, it's so bright and wonderful. The roof has such a large surface area to collect light. Uh, it's a cloudy day today and it is super bright in here. It's great. So anyways, what I can do, I'm going to grab the tripod or actually I'll grab the camera off the tripod and then I'm just going to take you around a little bit and show you some of the equipment we got going on first. And, um, as we go through, I will, you know, tell you what worked and what didn't work and what I've had to do to um, fix a few problems and stuff like that. Okay, so what I think I'll do, just like normal, I'm going to just give you a greenhouse tour and we're just gonna go around clockwise. Um, that's how we used to do it in the old greenhouse, so that's how we'll do it now. Um, as you can see, there's three levels of shelves plus the floor, so I actually have um, sort of four tiers of shelves there. As you come in the door, these are my lawn chairs and that. The last one back there, that is a reclining chair. I absolutely love it because it's um, there's enough space in here that if I'm not doing anything, I can just like pull out the recliner and it's so nice and warm and bright and sunny in here. Um, let's see, what else? We're going to um, skip the plants for now and I'm just going to do sort of some equipment stuff. And I did some decorating. There is a tiki and a wind chime there that blows in the wind. Um, let's see, I added this camera here. So we have a FOSS cam in the greenhouse now. It's awesome because I can look at the greenhouse from my iPhone or from my iPad. Uh, it records motion and movement and gives me motion alerts, stuff like that. It has night vision and is able to move around. So if I wanted to look at something in here when I'm not here, I can and if something was to happen in here I, I get it directly on my phone in real time and yeah there's sound it's wonderful it, it records so it can record onto my computer and yeah it just gives me that little bit of peace of mind it's like did I leave my coffee cup in there and I can like check and yeah move it around and it's kind of like a little um, joystick on the iPad and you can just move it around also got lots of fans in here right now so this fan blows across sort of the center here and that fan blows across the top that's sort of oscillating so of course as you would know the greenhouse the warm or the higher up it is the warmer it's going to be so I have lots of fans up there it's been some hot days lately so um, two days ago it was 31 degrees Celsius and yeah so it was really warm i ended up installing several more fans up top here so i originally had this guy here in the old greenhouse and when the vent opened the fan will go on at set temperature well, i found that one just wasn't keeping up so i had to add two more fans so that when the vents open all three fans come on at once to vent it out the, the temperature in here is much more stable because it's a bigger greenhouse it takes longer to heat up but it's also harder to cool once it gets there um, I have my trusty heater here. It's not on much these days, but it's there in case we um, need it. And it's the only reason I'm using this little fireplace thing because that's what I had. And this is sort of a do-it-yourself greenhouse, so I'm not into buying expensive equipment for it unless I have to. I put this little fan here. It's just um, basically zap-strapped to these cables here that are holding the shelf up and it turns into like this rocket stove sort of thing. The thing turns on and then this fan, high RPM, lots of air volume, blows out the heat evenly and uh, I found it was much more efficient at heating the greenhouse that way. Otherwise the heat was just sort of coming up and going up to the ceiling. This heater above here, this is on a different circuit. 
So if for some reason this heater failed, say the circuit tripped, I have a backup heater there. It's just set to a slightly lower temperature, but it would kick on in an emergency. So that is um, a good thing. Again, not so much for this time of year, but for the winter. I also am gonna swing up here, put up an infrared heater. So these guys are just the pull cord sort of guys like that. Um, I was hoping to get a different efficient heat source in here. I think it's really just going to be, uh, might use in the winter or in a chilly morning when I'm in here working or if I just need some extra heat. Trouble with this guy I found with infrared heating, I'm gonna turn it back off because it does throw off a lot of heat and it's not needed in here right now. It's um, probably 70 degrees. The trouble with the infrared heating I found compared to, we'll say the these guys here are, th these guys, they heat the air, which is a little less efficient, but you, you come into the greenhouse and it's a nice warm environment. Um, when the heater turns off, the air has to cool. And because the polycarbonate is well insulated, it cools down slowly. Where this guy, it actually heats the surface area of the plants. And in this case, to shut it off, it heats the surface area of the little sensor probe that it was hooked up to when I had it hooked up to the, the sensor. And what would happen, it would slowly warm it up, it would heat up the sensor probe, it would turn itself off, but because the air was cold and the sensor probe was small, within minutes the heater was back on. And it didn't feel as nice and warm in here to me either when I would come in. So I found it just, infrared just for me, wasn't an effective, efficient way of heating it. I got it on sale at Canadian Tire. It wasn't that expensive. And I thought, you know what, I'm gonna keep it anyways. If it doesn't stay in here, it can go out on the patio. It'll be nice for chilly evenings. Um, but yeah, so it lasted for just one night and I think I found it stayed on the whole night. The funny thing is the FOSS cam there can see the heater and every time the heater would come on because the FOSS cam has infrared, it would see the light from the heater kick on turn itself onto the recording mode and take a video of it and send me still images to my phone so I could tell exactly when it would turn on and off because I had this like log book of exactly when this thing turned on because of the orange light that it produces and when it would turn off and it just it wasn't that efficient. So I'll take you over this way I'll show you this is my heating sensor here it's got a day and night sensor so it's set at 65 in the daytime, that's Fahrenheit, and as low as it can go at night. Its lowest temperature that it's got set is 55, but I've got to actually turn past that, so I call it like 53. And that just has the probe that goes, where does it go? It goes somewhere. It goes up around. You can see the wire for the probe there. I'm not sure where it heads actually at this point. Let's see if we can find it. There it is. It's stuck to the edge of that shelf. So that probe is what controls the temperature in here. And so right now, if that probe is to go below 65 degrees, the heater would kick on. All right, moving down. This is the grow chamber. Um, a little bit of equipment in there. I mean, I found that the two lights that I painted black, actually, they hold the heat in that really well. And there's just little muffin fans in there. Um, I found them at, for five bucks at the source works well so show you the difference in temperature in here we have 69 Fahrenheit today because it's a cloudy day but even on a cloudy day it's warmed up four degrees in here with no solar sort of radiation and this one to get past the condensation is just about 80 Fahrenheit so you can see there so it's 80 in the grow chamber and 69 in the greenhouse. So we have a nice lowland environment there. And then when the greenhouse is 80, this is more like 95. On the hot days, I did have to unzip the sides because it was um, really hot in there. At one point, it was like 110, just for a few minutes. But it was 110 anyways. Um, my little table that I, I haven't um, found anything better to do potting on, so I'm working with that right now. I have to have a stool in here now because I can't get up to the top shelves or I can't get up to the fans or anything to work up there. So, let's see. This is my trusty Zoomed, I think it's called the Hydrotherm. That's what controls the cooling system right now. 
it's set to cool at 82 and at 69. This turns on the fans up above. So by the time that sensor gets to 82 degrees, the vents are open and they're just waiting for the fans to turn on and the fans turn on and suck out the air. I have two vents that are on the floor that are um, relatively non-impressive so I won't bother showing you. They're closed right now anyways. That I open on a hot day so it pulls in the cooler air from the ground outside and blows out the hot air. This also controls my humidity which right now, let's see, my humidity says it's 92% in here. It's set to 85%, so the foggers would come on. You can see the ballast for the foggers down there. There's two of them. And then the foggers are underneath the lowland chamber in a 45-gallon tank. Let's see. What else? I do have a couple lights that I am keeping here for some of my carnivorous plants still. Find on a cloudy day, you know what? What the heck? It, um... It beats them sitting there not doing anything. The helis there actually really appreciate it because it's a perfect temperature in here for them right now. It's a perfect humidity in here for them right now. It's a bit cloudy. So by turning that on, it just gives them that extra little boost of light and it gives them a good growing environment. I put them in this tray because the other day it was getting warm in here and I wasn't um, sure if I was going to have to like have them bail on the greenhouse. Um, when it was 31 outside, it was had to be 31 in here as well, right? I don't have any kind of air conditioning, so I rely on the air that's coming in from outside. So it was pretty warm in here. I had them sitting on the floor here, down because the floor is the coolest spot. The shade cloth was up. That's something we haven't talked about. This is my shade cloth here. It is a do-it-yourself shade cloth. I bought this just at like a fabric store, and it was really, really cheap, and it's really, really light, and I've had it for years. I've been using it with the old greenhouse. So I don't quite have as much as I would like in here. But this, with my light meter, I can tell gives me a 50% block of sun. So I put up the shade cloth inside here, but across all the cool growing stuff. So gives them um, a good amount of shade. And being when the vents are on, or when the fans are on, the cool air and the humidity gets sucked into this area here. And it keeps this area much cooler than, we'll say, the Catleas and the Vanda area over there. Did a little bit of decorating on this side as well. There was a wind chime that my neighbor complained about um, being outside. So it's now in the greenhouse. It doesn't chime or anything, this one. Here is another wind chime that my neighbor complained about. So it's inside the greenhouse as well. This one um, I've had for a few years, and she complained about it a few years back. This one I got last year, and she complained about it right away. There is my sculpture, or my carving from when I went to Bali. I think that is Barong. I'm sure it's going to give me bad chi in here, but um, so far so good anyways. What else? I think the, um, oops, my finger was in the way there. Sorry, guys. I think the only other thing is, being that is a south-facing wall there, I did outside hook up a sort of pulley system with eye hooks and rope so that I can I have a piece of shade cloth like this out there you can actually see it hanging in the corner there on the outside and with the pulley system that pulls across and up so I can do that by myself because it's quite high out there I can't reach it all the time and I don't want it up 100% of the time like on a cloudy day like today it doesn't need to be up but now I'm able to get it up and it goes up the sides and over the roof to about there so it blocks all the sun from this area here and yet keeps it nice and bright and sunny because it doesn't block the sun over the entire roof area. In the summertime I may be kicking myself because it's not blocking the entire roof but um, for now it's working great. It's something I can do myself. The little project was just with the materials I had so the um, thing was I just wanted to be able to bring it up and down at my own um, at my own discretion there. Oh, another thing that I can show you back behind here, here are some more sensors. One of course is just to go into the house. It has a high low temperature alarm on it. It sits beside my bed. So if the temperature was to get too low at night, not not big deal this time of year, <clears throat> excuse me. But in the winter, the alarm would go off if something was to fail. And this one here, 
the lacrosse alert is actually one that goes to the computer and goes to the iPhone and so I can not only see my greenhouse when I'm out on my iPhone I can actually see the temperature I can see the humidity so it is all I, I mean, it's not controlled but it's all I can bring up all the stats for it so I can see what's going on I can see the temperature and everything like that from anywhere in the world so that is great um, definitely worth the the money for that guy I just found it on eBay that's just a lacrosse al lacrosse alerts thermometer of some sort and yeah anyways I think that is about all the techie stuff for the greenhouse now maybe what I will do is give you a tour of the actual plants and flowers but we'll do that on a second video just in case you're getting tired and you want to take a break okay guys thanks for watching